on behalf of sky yoga online english meditation group i am professor gk bharati welcome you all to today's special program week week after week we are having special lectures by some special professors this week also we are going to enjoy such a special lecture on the topic on the bliss that is brahmam our senior professor and mentor professor balchandra nayya is with us to introduce the special guest welcome professor balchandra nayya uh, thank you professor bharti on go of the on behalf of the daily meditation i cordially invite joining bharti ji all of you who have joined this program and today as i said every sunday we look forward we have daily meditations going on both morning and evening but sunday is something special because it is on sunday only we invite some senior people associated with somiji and our system to share uh, their thoughts on some important topic and today we are very glad to have professor gopal from usa a very a close personal friend of mine He has been associated with our system for more than thirty years now. We back in ninety one, in the headquarters in Chennai. He started. He entered the Sky System. Next year he became a master. He served in India for some time. Then from he went to Singapore. That he helped uh, developing the system for five years. Then he moved to USA. and i think the 2000 year 2007 or so in irvine in california in the hindu temple he started a center there and they are doing great work more than 10 masters have been produced more than 200 people have been initiated into the system and professor gopal has been very active in spreading the system all around the world he is also the uh, coordinator for the uh, western part of usa it's indeed a pleasure to invite him and and the topic is also very nice on the bliss that is brahmam brahmam is a very abstract concept but maharishi has made it in such a way that even common man can understand and start enjoying that so let's hear uh, sr professor gopal on this wonderful topic i thank him for accepting and uh, giving this program today over to sir gopal world shivananda yeah please take over you can unmute and speak sir gopal ah uh, yes sir uh, okay world shivananda do you hear me now yeah yes you okay be blessed by the divine thank you aya for the wonderful introduction um, uh, and good evening all and good morning for those who are joining from usa um it's indeed a great pleasure to meet all of you are you able to see my screen okay uh, and am i audible fine yes sir yes yeah, fine okay thank you very much yeah be blessed by the divine salutations to god god the primordial state transformed into the atom or the life energy the atoms combine to form different elements which in turn combine to form different cosmic objects and the universe this divine state with this infinite consciousness also manifested as a synthesis between life and death this consciousness also guides humans to lead a spiritual way of life let us realize this divine state serve the world and find true happiness Salutations to Guru, my dear Guru. You showed me the way to control my thoughts and stay in peace. In that state, when my mind stays still, a great joy springs from there. As the end goal of so many births in this great world, you gave me a life of constant awareness. This is my happy news to you. World Hour Modern. So today, um, the topic I've chosen is on the bliss uh, that is Brahmam. So let's uh, dive into it. Um, so this is the content that we'll look at it uh, today so source of the topic i'll explain uh, why i've chosen this and uh, there are some verses from taitri upanishad so i'm not a authority in any way possible 
uh, on, on the Upanishads, but I've been more interested in learning uh, Upanishads, what they're teaching, because Swamiji is considered to be uh, uh, his name itself, right? Like Vedas Artha. Right? He's given all the essence of the Vedas to us. So I wanted to know what is the Upanishads talking about, right? So that's why I've chosen this study and I've been progressing in this. So I just wanted to share that uh, knowledge and uh, uh, see if you also could be interested, right? So that's the main idea here. And Swamiji's explanation on the Brahman uh, that um, he wrote a poem on that. So I want to discuss that on divine ecstasy and uh, give a recap and then acknowledgements of my source of my knowledge or the information that I'm sharing with you so that you also can research further. Okay, so with that, we'll get into the topic here. <clears throat> so this is um, on the bliss that is Brahmam. This is a, a chapter in the Taitri Upanishad. It's a second chapter. And this Upanishads, Upanishads in the sense, they mean that it is the end of the Vedas. Uh, every Veda, Rigya, Jur, Sama, and Atharvana, they have at the end of the Veda, the, the teachings or the essence, uh, talking about Brahmam. So it's a Brahma, knowledge of the Brahmam or the divine, right? And they also, uh, or also like in the olden days, people, the, the disciple used to go and sit below the teacher and listen to him. So Upa is to sit below, uh, sit in the ground and listen to the teacher. So that's how the Upanishads came into uh, being, right? So, and this belongs to the Krishna Yajurveda. And this consists of three parts, which is the Siksha Valli for the students. And Brahmananda Valli, which is explains the Atman. That's what we are taking today for the discussion. And Brihu Valli is, uh, repeats the idea of Ananda through the story about the sage Brihu. Um, so this Brihu, he learned it from his uh, father, uh, Varuna, uh, about the Brahman or the Atman. So that part is covered in this chapter of Brihu Valli. Okay. And the topic chosen here is about the second chapter, and uh, which is explains the Ananda or the bliss that is Brahman. And Swamiji has given the essence of all the Vedas in his teachings, and uh, he has made it very simple and easy for us. But it always uh, helps us to go uh, to see where the old teachings um, are leading us, right? And uh, what is the real essence behind all the Upanishads? So that's how I've chosen this topic now, okay? So, <clears throat> so there are nine verses in this chapter and uh, I'm not going to read the Sanskrit part because I'm also learning that. Uh, the pronunciations are very important in Sanskrit. So, but just give the essence in English, right? So that's what the uh, we'll discuss through here. Okay. So in the first one, it says, uh, Brahma with Apnoti Param. So that's the core uh, um, essence of this uh, Taitri Upanishads. And by the way, Taitri Upanishads, how the name came up, right? So it says that uh, there was a sage uh, whose uh, disciple was uh, Yagna Valkya. Okay. And somehow his, uh, he got uh, angry at one, on, one time about his disciple. And he said, okay, whatever I taught you, you just give it back to me, right? He was so very mad at him that he wanted uh, him to give back whatever he has taught. So then uh, the sage Jagna Valkyar, he, he vomited actually, it seems. Uh, all that he has, knowledge that he has assimilated from the guru. And uh, it is interesting to see that uh, he says it's all Taitri birds, right? The birds, the small birds are called Taitris. So he said, uh, the guru seeing the, uh, the, the thing coming out of this uh, disciple, he felt that it was more than what he has given to the disciple. He has assimilated it and given back with a full knowledge and uh, ease of understanding. So he asked all his disciples to turn into birds and uh, consume all that, uh, uh, all that uh, droppings from, the, from, from his mouth, right? So, so that's how it, this, the, the Upanishad got its name. And also, they also talk about, um, yeah, this has become a, a, and a complete set of knowledge. So it tell, talks about student learning, it talks about the knowledge of the Atman, and it talks about the 
Brihu uh, is learning. Uh, so it's an entire study. Uh, even in today's, uh, it's a very popular Upanishad and people learn a lot about this and uh, recite all the mantras of this as well. So that's how this story goes back, okay? Uh, that's just for information. And now, so now look at the first one, which says Brahma with Apnoti Param. On that, which says real consciousness infinite is the Brahman. And uh, whoever knows it uh, in the hid on the hidden cave in the highest, uh, in the minds, right? He will be able to uh, attain all the desires together as the Brahman, as the wise. So, so the knowledge of the Brahman or absolute is the one that is uh, giving you the divine knowledge, right? So that's how this one sentence, which is the, the essence of all the Taitri Upanishad. Okay. So that's the first part in this, uh, they explain that. And what covers in this is what Swamiji has given us in the five sheets of uh, uh, existence, right? So uh, we know that there's a physical body, there's a vital energy sheet, there is a mental energy sheet, and then there is a wisdom sheet and the bliss sheet. And the soul is the, Atman is a, a under all of this, right? And it controls the other sheets. Sheets means it's a cover, right? Like a sword you put into a cover. So like that, we are all covered, the Atman is covered as different sheets. And once you peel off like onion, then each of this gets over. Uh, we are able to overcome all this uh, Maya or illusion and we get to the real Atman. So the whole Taitir explanation, the first three to five uh, mantras, they teach about this sheets that cover us, right? And our true uh, nature of the soul or consciousness uh, is hidden from the uh, from us, right? So, and then we are able to, uh, once we are able to see this and peel off the onion, then we are able to go deeper and deeper to our true nature. So, so this talks about in, uh, it's called Annamaya Kosha, which is made up of food and matter that we like, consume, right? So first, uh, all of the matter was produced as food, like all the food, plants, life, and all were produced before any living beings came up. And food is the essence of all our existence, right? Without food, nobody can exist, right? The second one is the Pranamaya Kosha, uh, the vital energy. And then the, uh, which is called the life energy, right? Or the prana. In here, they talk about prana as the uh, breath uh, that we have, right? So they have, uh, we'll go through that in a, in a detail uh, in a bit. And then we have the manomaya kosha, which is a mind sheath. And uh, so that's about uh, thinking about uh, things, right? So the mind, uh, the things about uh, different things. So that is the mind and then the intellect, right? Is uh, distinguishing between right and wrong and choosing the right action. So those are the intellectual intellectual action of the Vijnana Maya Kosha. And then the Ananda Maya Kosha, which is the bliss sheath. So why it is called a bliss sheath? Because at this time also the ignorance is not gone, right? We are still ignorant. Uh, like when we sleep, right? We are, we are in a bliss state, but are we aware in that state, no, we are not. So that's called the Ananda Maya Kosha. So they're all arranged in a telescopic manner, like as you take the telescope and expand it and compress it, right? So it is like one in inside the other and one which is the root of the other. So that's how this has been uh, described. And the outer deriving the vi vitality from the inner. So these are the five sheets that we, we discuss in the different mantras here. So from that, verily the self, so they, it talks about uh, the self transforming into the five states, okay? Uh, first is the ether or the akash that's born from the divine, right? And from there, the air came up, the hydrogen, and fire came up, which is the oxygen. And then the air and the heavy air combined to form, to combine water, and from the water, uh, the earth also get got formed and from the, the plants and the food and the fruit to the man. Okay, so that's the, his whole history of the divine. 
he verily is a brahman which is formed of the he verily is this man formed of the food essence so they compare this to a bird always to a bird with its head with its uh, body with its right wing right wing left wing and the tail so that's how each of these mantras will go uh, okay so here they call itself the man itself as a head and uh, there is a right hand which is the right wing left hand which is the left wing and this is a self which is a trunk and then the tail which is the leg part okay so that's how they compare to a bird in each of these mantras it comes like that okay and then uh, the second one uh, it talks about the the pancha koshas right so the first is the annamaya kosha uh, so we will cover that here so from the food what happened from the food which the, the every, everything came up right so once we eat the food we live and once we we die we go back as the fodder to the soil we can we become the the manure to the food so we all the five uh pancha bhutas disintegrate and we go back to the uh, earth or the prithvi or uh, so that's how we we originate from the food and we die and go back as food or the earth right so surely food is the eldest they um it is the the main prime thing that's what they're saying and it's a medicament of all so we should consume food as a medicine they say right so it's a medicine of all so you must eat with that consciousness right as food as a medicine and then it's called the medicament of all and from the food all the beings are born and uh, by and the by the food they are we all grow as well it is fed upon and it is feeds on beings hence uh, the food is called as the uh, eldest and it's the medicament so from the food what happened is there is another form which is a prana which is a breathing right by this uh, one is filled so then he verily is the one of man's shape so after his human a man shape is a uh, human shape um of him prana itself is the head right and then vyana uh, so there are five pranas uh, they talk about uh, we we'll look at it uh, so prana is the head vyana is the right wing apana is the left wing akasha is a trunk and earth is a tail on that two is a verse so if you look at the five pranas that we have right so it's udana prana samana vyana and apana so these are different breaths uh, breathings that happen within our body right so so prana is a physical location is diaphragm to the throat and udana is a physical location from throat to the head samana is the one that helps for digestion and vyana is located pervades the entire body for circulation right and apana is the one that's in the local pelvic to the feet and it helps in the excretory process so and there are other upa pranas also naga kurma krikara devadatta and dananjaya so they are also called the sub pranas okay so they talk about these five pranas as the body itself right so the prana is on underneath the annamaya kosha which is a pranamaya kosha okay and then <clears throat> uh we have the uh the third one after the pranas do the devas live also as men and beasts so prana is verily the life duration the whole life duration uh do they reach where prana is as a brahman so it's considered as a brahman and uh, then we have the manomaya kosha which is behind that right after the semen shape there is a man man shape and here uh, they talk about the the shape of the body as uh, yajus is the head and then the rig uh, is the right wing saman uh, samaveda is the left wing ordinance is the self and angira is also the tail and the support so they talk about the four vetas uh, as the body of the bird that has to go and consume the the, the teachings okay so so these are the uh, different uh, prana uh, and the manomaya kosha that goes behind the pranamaya kosha okay and when so so then the mind uh, when the mind turns back as well as as manas when we know the mind then we have we know the bliss of brahman 
and there is no fear at all okay so uh, so even when uh, sage uh, janaka uh, was uh, um, a realized person in the sage yagnavakya who taught him he said now you are fearless and now you are the realized person so when we are realized then there is no fear of anything so when does a fear come it is when you know the the duality or we are away from the brahman then that's when we know the the fear aspect okay so that's what they talk about here and then with that beyond the manomaya is the vinyanamaya kosha and uh, that is talked about as a uh, faith as the head and then righteousness is the right wing truth is the left wing yoga is the self and maha or uh, the the surya is the tail and uh, so they talk about so when we do the meditation and yoga so we, we should have the righteousness when we have we should have the truth and do the yoga practices right and that's how we need to get to the mano avinyanamaya kosha okay and then we have the intelligence aspect which comes in the uh, manam buddhi chittam ahankaram right so this is a chittam which is intelligence aspect and uh, so this deals, deals with the uh, an, um, uh, anandamaya kosha okay and uh, so so this is talked about as a human shape as a, a man's uh, love itself right uh, love itself is a head joy is a right wing delight is a left wing bliss is a self and uh, brahman is a tail that supports uh, on that to the server so so all these verses they talk about is a, a reverse from the rigveda uh, the day i also explain in the first part of the mantra okay so that's what they talk about and the, the two servers here so these uh, four sheets right are covered with the four things that we know right so so body uh, body mind and the Uh, intellect right so and if we know the brahman as non existent he himself so then they talk about the uh, whether we know the brahman as non existent or he himself becomes non existent so when we know the brahman as non we say that there is no brahman then we himself we become non existent so we need to have faith right shraddha in in the brahman or in the teachings right um so uh, the self is the essence of all the five koshas so that's what they uh, talk about and they also say whether does the ignorance so there are three questions they raise here one is uh, is there a brahman right that's the first question they want to answer then the third second question is is there a uh, is a, a wise person right after that does he reach the brahman and the prior person was not realized that he reached the brahman or the consciousness right so to answer that uh, what the upanishad says is you got um, it explains the existence of brahman in seven ways okay so it says there are seven reasons why the brahman exists and it also concludes saying only the wise person with the knowledge of brahman realizes the brahman and it uh, doesn't say that the uh, the knowledge the, the person without knowledge or the unrealized person doesn't reach uh it is understood right so that it says that only the wise person who is a self realized soul will be able to know the brahman so so with that it it tells you about the existence of the faith uh, the importance of faith in knowing the true brahman so so what happened is first there was only non existence everywhere it was uh, non existence and from that ex- from that the existence was born right so when swami ji explains this he says uh, um uh, there is a dark matter or the dark uh, or the or the bliss which with the self compressive surrounding pressure force crushed itself right and formed a high speed spinning particle right which is a uh, vedan or the the formative dust particle right so he talks about in the same way so what was was exist non existent which was not in the physical realm of existence came into existence it made itself right it is self made 
it made itself he it thought okay i want to become something right i want to become another one so where did it come from it made itself right so that's the source of the brahman and uh, <clears throat> so they also say it and it's a source of the bliss also right and having obtained this taste one becomes blessed from who can breathe in or breathe out so there is no nobody can who can breathe in or breathe out without the bliss of the brahman in the cavity of the heart right and it brings us the joy that we know right so atman is the one that is fearless when it's one with the brahman which is the invisible which is the incorporeal which is inexplicable and unsupported right so however where we become free from fear right when we become one with the brahman but uh, when we make a slight distinction of uh, away from the brahman then we have the danger of uh, having the fear so the duality is known when we know the uh, away from the brahman we are we are thinking that we are not right so when you have the slightest doubt right then you get the fear right so the very same brahman becomes a source of the fear also so everything happens in two right existent and non existent fear and non fear so all that is also produced by the brahman itself so that's the verse that is being described here and through fear of him blows the wind so they say about uh, how is this the whole thing uh, happening is uh, the wind is blowing because of fear of the brahman that's how they say and they also say the fire is burning and the moon is shining because of the fear of the brahman and they also talk about uh, rises the sun also the sun rises and sets because of the fear everything is in order of function right uh, order of function in everything and everything is consciousness the god says swamiji right so even the death the mithru he also functions with fear of brahman so all the five things are working accordingly to the fear of brahman that's what they say here okay. and the following is inquiry concerning the bliss of the brahman and the rasa so they also have this beautiful comparison here which says okay if you are a youth and if you are a very good and well versed with all the knowledge of the scriptures and uh, you have the best strength and uh, health right and you are well disciplined and uh, you are resolute and very strong right so if you and you have all the world as the wealth for you right then what unit of bliss that you get is called one unit okay and now they talk about this bliss is 100 times more for the uh, man gandharva so which is a human gandharvas is a next stage it's all imaginary but it's better to know this because the bliss that they explaining in the brahman is scaled and multiplied by this uh, multiplication okay by this factors so the 100 units of that man so man who exists in the world the maximum pleasure that he can derive from here is 100 times more for the a uh, human gandharvas so gandharva is a elevated soul let's say in the human human realm and before for the existence of the, the bliss that is existing for that person is 100 times more for the celestial gandharvas again okay they are in another realm and 100 uh, fold for that celestial is the one for the um, manas okay so uh, those who continue whose world continues for long it's the pitru uh, is called the the next level okay and that multiplied by uh, 100 times was for the ajana cha gods which is uh, born in the devaloka gods born in the devaloka and uh, and they all compare it to the same bliss that's explained for a person who is well versed in the knowledge of the vedas and the srotriyas so and person was transcended all his desires he is equal to all of these even though it's 100 times for each and every time but the person who is well versed and who has transcended all desires his knowledge is his bliss is ultimate that's what they are saying here so every time they compare it 
and it's also the measure of the bliss of the srotriya who has transcended all his desires so this joy of god is a uh, uh, born in the devaloka is multiplied by 100 fold is a unit of joy for the gods which is the karma devas okay and uh, they do some special karma um and then uh, 100 times that is called for the uh, bliss of the office bearers there are gods like 33 gods they say they are the office bearers like uh, indra uh, and other gods like um, the, the panjabhutas that we have all these are different gods and uh, so they the, their joy is 100 times more than the karma devas and 100 times that is the uh, joy of for the indra who is the head of all the gods right and 100 times that is uh, uh, for the um brahaspati right um, and then who is the guru of the indra and then 100 times more is for the prajapati who is the brahman that we call right brahma lord brahma is called the prajapati or the uh, hiranyagarbha who has created the whole universe right and at every time the srotriya the one who has learned learned all the scriptures and all the and follows uh, and is free from desires that person's uh, this bliss is equal to all of this right so the reality in the core of the man and the reality which is in the sun is one and the same okay uh, they say the atman which is the same for all of these and he who knows this on leaving the world first attains atman which is made of food so one when he leaves so we grow in these uh, consciousness right so one is the anamaya kosha the pranamaya kosha the manomaya kosha and then the vijnanamaya kosha and then the anandamaya kosha and the source of the bliss within the anandamaya kosha is the atman of the brahman okay so that's the whole essence here so he who knows the bliss of the brahman from which all the worlds words return without reaching so mana vakinil tattamal nindrade idu right there is one poem like that right so it, it is not reached by the mind and it's not reached by the speech the words return without attaining the brahman they also talk about uh, lord shiva uh, uh, like brahma and vishnu were trying to see the head and feet of the lord shiva and they started flowing uh, flying like he took the shape of a swan brahma and he went up and then the vishnu he took a shape of a boar and dig deeper into the earth and went down so both were going and going but they never saw the head or the foot uh they say right so that's the mighty uh, mightiest of the uh, mighty of the lord shiva right or the brahman so uh, so the, without reaching it so words return without reaching the brahman it's to give the mind which is not afraid of anything so that's the essence of reaching the divinity right he is not afraid of anything so and he doesn't have anything like uh, these are the characteristic of the person who has reached the brahman and they say um uh, why have not done any good why did i do this sin right so those questions don't arise in him who is experiencer of the truth so why doesn't it arise because he is a, he doesn't have the duality right he is one with the brahman and he does, whatever he thinks is the right thing whatever he does is the right thing right when swami ji talks about uh, him he says the uh, when the realized person is there he thinks about and does only the the right things and there is nothing to be afraid of and he doesn't have oh well, i should have done it that way i should have done it this way why did that person hurt me or something so all these questions will be eliminated when you realize the the truth okay so that's that's the whole uh, essence of all this nine mantras so and then there is always the uh, protection divine protection they say right sahana vavatu sahana bunaktu sahaviryam karavavahai tejasvinavaditamastu mavidvishavahai om shanti 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 this is the shanti pada which comes in all the uh, way the uh, upanishad so he tells you eliminate all the obstacles in in attaining this knowledge from 
from the study so that's how uh, the disciple and the the guru are learning this together so let the let the lord protect us both let us all both enjoy the fruits of scriptural study may we both exert together to find the true meaning of the sacred text and may our study be fruitful right and they pray to the the lord before so that we are able to attain this knowledge without any obstacles so that's how they told, uh, tell the shanti padam okay so so this is how the whole concept of uh, as the atman which is the underlying which is the source of all the bliss that's how uh, this taitri uh, upanishad is describing so when you come to the vedatri and model it says about energy particle consciousness and the static state which we briefly discussed right so static state which is absolute space it crushed itself right uh, by highly compressive self surrounding pressure force as the formative dust particles and they millions and millions of them coalesce together to form the energy particle that we know or the akash right and uh, that's a repulsive wave it's able to come it's able to withstand the compressive force of the entire uh, absolute space so so this is explaining that and we have the five koshas are linked to the body consciousness the soul consciousness or the life energy consciousness and then the universal consciousness and the uh, almighty or the absolute right so so there is a um so these are all different circles again the telescopic effect right so body consciousness leading to the life energy consciousness and beyond that is the universal consciousness and then the absolute is the seat of all the uh, all the consciousness is the seat right so that's why swami ji says consciousness is brahman or the or the divine and that's where our meditation practices help us to go for the satma darshanam when we do the duryadita meditation when we do the uh five element nine planet or even go beyond to the absolute or the static what we meditate on the absolute space so we get our mind frequency lower and lower to subtler frequencies to get to the the divine which is a delta state which is one to three cycles per second okay and uh, this poem by swami ji was written in 1984 when he visited uh, california in yaka in yaka valley so i am from california so uh it's fortunate that this place where he visited uh, we also been there and it was uh uh it's like 80 miles from my place so i've uh, been uh, fortunate to visit there uh, and spend uh, some time with all the other uh, usa colleagues here um so this is when he wrote this so he was teaching guruyatita meditation and his mind remained in that state and in that state of bliss and that's where he, re- he wrote this poem i am not going to read it in tamil but i just uh, put it together here so i'll see it in uh, english here so earth is a huge world right i live a uh, live a, as a small minded human being i have countless thousands of thoughts who knows the strangeness that arises who knows right how do the thoughts come right i am a small being in this entire universe the, even the earth is a tiny dust speck right but in that time living and i have thousands of thoughts what is the strangeness of this what is the beauty of this right and tiny cells join together and cooperate action that cannot be comprehended by the mind happens in this body right previously by a single drop of sperm or natham my body is fully created by the almighty self development started from the divine that is hidden difficult to explain the divine and as continuity of the imprints by divine blessing and will who rules without the rule i have reached the earth and after leaving mother's womb right so how great is the divine mind which has infinite power as a perfect way for all human beings it is wonderful to shape the female form with power how many of the living people are knowledgeable of the truth so the who worship right the female power are the people who live in this world for long time those who gain pride by insulting women the world will know the pain of taking the burden of the great sin by thinking women's greatness and talking great and writing great of women and enjoyed thus lives like a god in this world always we are eternal when we praise the the female uh, power transforming to living things living beings and being present inside them as senses and consciousness 
in the world enabling different life i realized the beauty of rich variety of crops he manifests a different food and wealth for the pleasure of all in the life so this is the annamaya kosha that we are talking about so he manifests the food and only then he created all the living beings right if the plant life is there there will not be one sense organisms right if some is in there so he created the food first and then created the living beings right so for the good higher thinking and to win the five senses the god who gave the body and stood as consciousness within is it there or is it not there there are many arguments right is the god there is it not there it is woven in our lives as if it was a cotton thread in the clothes everywhere in me and in all appearances without a gap as a divinity throughout the great universe i understood the divinity that stays and thrives by the feet of lone fed steadfast meditation by going inside the mind so the key to realizing the brahman is the meditation that we do right so bring the mind to subtler and subtler frequencies and merging with the absolute or the static space right who am i that is the body mind or consciousness the harmony sounds like a melody the body as a vehicle the life energy as a source of the energy and beyond the universe the consciousness the truth that i am i kept in him in me i carried him i admired him i joined myself in him and sing as god i became one with him i sing as god to realize the virtue in yourself um i sing uniting all the people of the world so he he sees the world as one he is called the world citizen right vedatri marish he sings with uniting all the people of the world right that's how he gave us the the 14 principles of vedatriyam uh he says porilla nalludagam right so world without war porul thrail samani nidhi right so he says about economic equality so there that there are 14 principles that we have so when how will he get that to level because he thinks the world as a one right and even beyond that right as brahman as as one with the the brahman or uh, swami has been guiding us even now right every time world material which is the body and real material which is the life energy of soul the higher arts of consciousness and moral living doing good for all i live in the middle path permeating all nations in the service of divinity and consciousness so he is not one nations uh, he is a world human uh, treasure that our swami is right and let the whole world live prosperously and keep the life rich and may the consciousness grow in the bliss and enjoyment of life people all over the world have desire for the true truth and let it grow and grow and let our hearts unite and prevail unite to prevail so so this is the uh, poem that uh, uh, swami ji has given us so just to conclude i give a summary of the taitri upanishad so first thing they give us a sutra vakyam which is a which is like a, a formula brahma vit apnoti param one who knows the brahman is attains the supreme so that's a formula and vritti is to explain that how do we att- understand this brahman is satyam jnanam anantam brahman yo vid yo veda nihitam guhayam parame vyoman shoshnute sarvan kamansa brahmana vipaschita iti one who knows the brahman as a true anatman so they say satyam jnanam knowledge is brahman satyam truth is brahman and anantam right is as different pala pala right when swami ji talks about anantam some confuse it with the word called anandam which is a bliss anantam is different different how many different lives of forms have formed right you see you go into the ocean you see so many different life forms plants so many different species right so anantam brahma right and how they explain this is atyaropa and abhavada prakaranam so they say the pancha bhutas are drawn from the brahman and they that's called adhyaropa so you produce something from the brahman and you negate something from the brahman that's called abhavata which is the removal of each of the five koshas and then you go back to the nirguna brahman so why to first put that in the brahman and then take it off right so we see that the 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 source of everything is coming from the external objects the source of our happiness we see it's coming from the external objects but until we realize that the source of the bliss is the brahman itself right and when we know that that's when the jnani sits in the under the tree 
and realizes that he is by blitz is, uh, is itself is guided by the brahman so the way you negate and negate we have the vairagya right and uh, the more you negate and negate that's how you get to the higher bliss right it's get, one is to attain the happiness by attaining some objects or to negate it right so when you negate it you get more vairagya and vairagya leads to more bliss okay? and they give a lot of explanation so there are seven reasons for brahman to exist i said right so they say brahman is the cause of the universe which is the upadana and nimitta reasons which is uh, like a pot maker and a pot made right so the 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 clay is the upadana which is the reason and the nimitta is the clay and the pot maker this is the nimitta karana so brahman is the person who made everything so he is the upadana karya and he is the nimitta karya jeeva roopa he entered the creation in the form of living beings and non beings and he is the conscious a jagat roopa not much different from the second so it is a conscious it he is the existent and non existent so that's how he is a jagat roopa and he is a rasavada prasiddhi producer of joy we think the joy comes from external objects but no when you go into deep sleep also we are experiencing the bliss right so it doesn't mean there are objects no there are no objects in the deep sleep but still we are experiencing the bliss so how is that is because of the bliss that is part of the brahman itself and then the karya karana so the physical body merging with the five senses work together union uh, that is another reason why we say the brahman is existing because when body dies the uh, atman leaves and there is no sensation there right so the so brahman is existing because of that and the cause of fear and non fear is also uh, the king janaka and the sage yagnavakya example so then the ananda mimamsa which is the ananda 100 times right that ex, that explanation that we gave ananda mimamsa so which mimamsa means it's a inquiry and the inquiry on the bliss that is coming from the brahman and palashruti so what you gain by attaining the brahman is no fear there is no punya or pava and uh, so those are the things that we gain from the uh, attaining the brahma uh, brahman or the reality so uh, just to conclude we have gone through the five koshas of the brahman which is annamaya kosha pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha and anandamaya kosha the bliss of brahman is in our core hidden and unaffected by these five sheets right and he is a bliss and merging our consciousness with this total consciousness we attain the self realization as experiencer and the experiencer experience are the one right and the bliss of the infinite manifests in us and there is no fear and meda train model places consciousness as god and is the inner truth in all and the reality of transformation of the brahman to all that is in the universe and all sans the unmanifested thank you be blessed by the divine world 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 and these are the references i have uh, so i can share the powerpoint later uh, and also you can refer to these um, um, different upanishads uh, and the uh, books by swami ji which are the sources of this okay world hormon be blessed by the divine that that was an excellent and detailed speech on the topic on the bliss that is brahma you have very well explained how to get the bliss so that we can just merge with brahma uh, just you have, you have just started your speech on by quoting taitriya upanishad upanishad and how our magarishi is explaining the same and he also quoted the poem that was written when he was in california usa it's a very wonderful lecture sir thank you so much sir for sparing your time and giving us this great lecture over to you balachandra sir balachandra Uh, yes, this is uh, very good. Taitre uh, Upanishad. Many of us might not have read it, and uh, at least we could give an idea of what it is and how. Swamiji has put it in such simple words. What has been said in Sanskrit and in multiplied hundredfold, 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 and so many things are there. And I think Marishi has made it very simple for all of us to uh, understand and practice it. it's always good to go to the source 
and in that way your research has been a great help to all of us and then i recollect whenever somebody talks about yaka valley california he used to be in a different frame of mind he used to enjoy the beautiful place which has been uh, and uh, he used to go to those frequencies very often write beautiful poems thanks for reminding us about those good old days and uh, definitely we will all try to make a trip visit Yak yaka valley and see where somebody conducted beautiful programs there now i leave it to the audience for any questions interactions and thanks to apurji for this wonderful lecture thank you thank you amma thank you aya ball hormone be blessed for everyone yeah friends all are welcome to have your questions and also any doubts the gopal ji is here to answer please come out it's just a discussion on how to reach brahmam how to enjoy the bliss you just raise your hand so that we can just admit you Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Shall we conclude, sir? Yeah, you can conclude. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Gopal Murugesan, sir, for your wonderful lecture on the topic bliss, that is Brahma. Thank you, our dear participants, for joining today, and I thank Professor Balchandra Nayya, senior professor and mentor, for his continuous guidance. thank you all dear friends every day we have meditation different kinds of meditation morning 6 am and evening 6:30 pm indian standard time kindly do participate and enjoy the bliss and also every sunday we have special lectures on by, by some special professors please do join and enjoy thank you all kindly do bring more of your friends and relatives into sky yoga so that they may also get benefited thank you all meet you tomorrow and also for the lecture the next sunday have a good day be blessed by the divine or hormone be blessed by thank you thank you or hormone yes